Hi everyone, I'm Peter Chu, a urologist from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Welcome again to the first Asian series of Grand Rounds in Urology. This is a series of talks by a group of Asian experts to talk about important urology topics from an Asian perspective. And today we are honored to have Professor Chen from Taiwan to give us a talk on cryotherapy for prostate cancer. Professor Chong Xing Chen comes from Kaohsiung City in Taiwan. He graduated from medicine and obtained his PhD degree in the National Taiwan University. He's a practicing urologist and is also currently the associate professor in the Department of Urology of National Taiwan University. He has served in the Taiwan Urological Association, TUA, for many years and is currently the Deputy Secretary General of the TUA. His research focuses on urological malignancies, including prostate cancer and urothelial cancers. He's very experienced in using cryotherapy to treat localized prostate cancer. And today we are honored to have Professor Chen here with us. Professor Chen, please. Thanks for Dr. Chu's invitation and introduction. It's my honor to present our experience here. I hope my presentation can resolve the question or obstacle you or urologists encounter. I'm Zhong Chen from National Taiwan University Hospital. This time, I will briefly show you prostate cryoperation in Taiwan. As that in the rest of the world, the instance was of the prostate cancer increased steadily and rapidly after 2000. Now, now it is the fifth leading male malignancy in Taiwan and about 6,000 new cases a year. The instance is more than 30 cases per 100,000 per year. Even though more metastatic prostate cancer, about 25% were noted in Taiwan, localized prostate cancer still consists of uh, three quarters of the new cases. How to select a suitable treatment for the patient is a critical issue. We should consider risk benefit together and risk include the economic burden, complication rates and the severity and benefit means the prolonged survival duration or increased quality of life. However, the weight of the risk and benefit vary with different aged comorbidity stage rate, of course, the physician preference. Among the treatment options for localized prostate cancer, prostate cryoperation is a minimally invasive surgery and suitable for the patient, not fit for the risky operation and are not willing to uh, have the radiation. In our institute, the endocare cryocare surgical system was utilized for all cryoabrasion procedures. Under linear array transrectal ultrasound guidance, the cryoprobe probe was sequentially in inserted safeguard from anterior to the posterior of the prostate. Generally, three pairs of the crowd probes were introduced into the prostate with less than 35 millimeter of the anterior posterior distance and four pairs of the crowd probe for those with 35 millimeter or more of the AP distance. If the prostate was asymmetrical, an additional crowd probe was employed. Following the attachment of the thermal couple, we always place in the bilateral neurovascular bundle apex, the novitis fascia, and sphincter. Of course, we will also introduce the urethral warming catheter. All prostate collaboration procedure were pro executed for double freeze flow cycle during the nadir of the temperature uh, in the bilateral neurovascular bundle, the novitis fascia, and apex was less than minus 40, minus 40, and minus 20 degrees Celsius, respectively. An additional cryoprobe was placed within the anterior rectal hump to provide warmth under trust guidance. This probe was inserted so far at midnight of the perineum skin into the anterior rectal wall advancing 2.5 to 5 centimeter deep at the 12 o'clock position of the rectal hump. Under trust sagittal image, this probe was parallel to uh, and about 0.5 centimeter from the serosa surface of the anterior wall. Care should be taken to avoid piercing 
this probe into the um, rectal lumen. The probe tip can be tied up away from the rectal wall and into the dinovidus space if the anterior superior rectal wall becomes too thin, too thin to accommodate the probe. And the dinovidus space is more than 0 0.5 centimeter at the level of the prostate, uh, at the level of the probe tip. Once the cryo abrasion in uh, ice bore began to invade the anterior aspect of the rectum, the rectum warming probe was activated to against the invading ice wall. How does cryo abrasion work on cancer damage? The common theory includes the direct injury of the ice crystal formation, vascular injury and its related plant irrigation, micro thrombosis, ischemia, aptosis, and immunomodulation, which will lead to aptosis and the necrosis thereafter. The ice ball was formed using George Thompson effect. Briefly speaking, high pressure room temperature of the argon gas would absorb thermal energy to become normal pressure argon gas. Therefore, the nearby tissue lose heat and is frozen rapidly. Our team has published several cryoabrasion related articles, including the technique, outcomes improvement, improvement, biophysiology, and the combined treatment. In our institute, localized prostate cancer at most up to T3B was, uh, are indicated for the uh, prostate cryoabrasion. The absolute uh, contraindication content T4 tumor T3 tumor, which is too large and not effectively covered by ice wall. No NS for the cryopro guidance, severe bleeding tendency, and active uh, urinary tract infection. The relative contraindication are the invasion of the intravascular prostate lobe, previous TERP history, and the rectal cancer status post the low anterior resection because the rectum is too. Uh, Fragile. I briefly report our previous uh, cohort followed for at least five years. Within these 289 patients, 77% received the primary total collaboration, 11% focal collaboration, and 5% salvage cryo, and 7% reduced cryo operation. And the median age is about 70 years. In the patients with primary total collaboration, high risk based on the AMICO classification occupied 61%. Looking into the details, we observe 30% of the T3 stage and 19% of Gleason sum 8 to 10, and 20% of PSA value more than 20 nanogram per million. Compared with other cryotherapy series, our cohort have more advanced disease. But this is because we, in Taiwan, we delayed the cancer late. We use the Phoenix criteria to uh, define biochemical failure and the disease status. Phoenix criteria means the biochemical failure is confirmed when the PSA uh, value more than PSA negative plus two. The five year disease free survival in alcohol is 79%. By stratification of the amico classification, the five year disease free survival rates are the 60%, 86%, 92% in the high, intermediate, and the low risk patient respectively. Compared to the large cryopro, uh, cryotherapy registry cohort in the United States, we call that the co-registry. The performance seems similar in our series and the co-registry. Then we compare the outcomes of the high risk patient who received laparoscopic radical prostatectomy at our hospital. Although the definition of biochemical failure vary between the laparoscopic radical prostatectomy and cryoabrasion due to the difference of underlying mechanism, the disease-free survival outcome are similar between these two treatment options. Which factor contribute to the outcome most? In our Cox proportion has the model for the disease-free survival. Gleason sum, 
stage, and seminal vesicle invasion, PSA value, were significant predictor. The multivariable analysis revealed only seminal vesicle invasion and PSA value were the independent predictor for disease-free survival. PSA value between 20 to 50 have 10 times of the risk of biochemical failure compared to that in the PSA less than 10 nanogram per meal. So PSA seems to be the most powerful predictor for biochemical failure. After stratification of the preoperative PSA value, non-patients who have the PSA more than 50 nanogram per meal still have disease status, disease-free status two years after cryoperation. The PSA value higher, the earlier failure develops. For the patient whose PSA value less than 20 nanogram per meal, uh, the four-year disease-free survival rate was satisfactory. Since we noticed several factors contributing to treatment outcomes, we wanted to know whether adjuvant homotherapy provides extra benefit, especially for the high-risk patient. We performed a small randomized study to confirm the hypothesis. The adjuvant homotherapy for 12 months really delayed the biochemical failure, but does not change the final outcome after the completeness of the homotherapy. Therefore, we know cryoabrasion may not get extra benefit from the HMO homotherapy. That's not like that in the setting in the radiotherapy. Then let's talk about how to early notice the effects of cryoabrasion. PSA nadir is the good indi indicator. In most circumstances, PSA nadir was detected at 8 to 12 weeks after cryoabrasion. In cases receiving total cryoabrasion, 92% of the patients have the PSA nadir less than 0 0.5, and 42% 40 are nadir between uh, less than 0 0.01. For the patient with PSA nadir less than 0 0.01, the recurrence rate is only 7.5%. In contrast, PSA bet nadir between 0 0.1 to 0 0.85 about 50% recurred. This leads us to take biopsy early and do require if possible. If, if the PS nadir is more than 0 0.5 nanogram per meal, none have the disease-free status after all. The common recurrence site located in the midpoint between each cryoprobe or far from the cryoprobe. For example, the anterior midline posterior mini, periurethra, and distal seminal vesicle. Therefore, we should carefully select the right patient for cryoabrasion. If the tumor locates at the above location, we should redesign the plan to do cryoabrasion. In the sagittal view, the anterior and the posterior apex also are also the common recurrent sites. So that's because our fear to injure the urethra sphincter and the rectum. This slide reveal overall and the cancer-specific survival. Although part of the high-risk patient developed tumor recurrence, the survival seems not change a lot after the salvage, sequential salvage treatment. We also performed several focal cryoabrasion in our hospital. However, it did not work very well in terms of disease control. All high-risk patients recur after cryoabrasion. Even in the low-risk patient, at least one-third had the biochemical failure. Therefore, to perform focal cryoabrasion should be balanced between the quality of life and treatment control carefully. In our cases, most recurrent sites were noted in the part without freezing. That means clear imaging may help improve outcomes in the patient uh, with the focal cryoabrasion. This table lists the complication of grade two or more in our series. The, the most common one is the acute urine retention, about 9%. We can be improved by the delayed removal of the photocatheter or cystostomy. The other 
common side effects of rectal pain, but we can resolve it by proactive rectal warming, warming probe. One serious uh, complication is the rectal fistula we encounter, we, we find one. Uh, this, is, this patient is very thin and there's no, no fat between the prostate and the rectum, so it injured the rectum. But the fistula can be resolved by the supportive care completely. So most of the complications are preventable or reducible. And the oncological outcome of Taiwanese patients was at least similar to that in code registry. And the outcome are similar between the cryo operation and the radical prostatectomy in our series. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Professor Chen, thank you very much um, for insightful lecture. Um, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so I can see that um, the results in terms of the cancer control, it's much better if you do a whole gland cryotherapy compared with um, hemi or focal treatment. So nowadays, um, are, you are you doing most of the cases in um, whole gland fashion? Uh, yes, we always do the um, prostate cryoabrasion and the whole gland because we noticed the focal cryoabrasion uh, did not work very well. And we know if you just uh, uh, do the cryoabrasion for one lobe, the tumor will recur in the other. So if we have mm -hmm. the more powerful imaging studies, maybe it can help us to select the right patients. I see. Um, and it is also amazing to see that you have uh, quite a number of patients um, having T3 disease and you're treating them. Um, but I can see that um, the local recurrence rate of those, um, of course, high clinical grade or high PSA patients, um, of course, they would have a higher risk of recurrence, even though they're whatever treatment you're giving them. So do you still treat a lot of T3 disease or would you change your plan if you're, you know, these days, will you change it to surgery or radiotherapy or are you still doing a lot of cryo for um, we do a lot patients? of the, um, uh, yes we all we still uh, treat the t3 patient with cryotherapy now we all still do that but we select a patient whose PSA value less than 20 nanogram per meal oh, because we know 20. that the cryo, yeah less than 20 cryoperation can ablate any kind of tumor include the high glycine score we can do that even the T3 tumor, if we, our ice ball can cover the tumor completely, we can cure it. But the tumor burden is the, the most important factor. The high tumor burden, that means you cannot cover the tumor completely. The PSA value more than 20 or more than 50, that means our ice ball cannot cover the tumor completely. That will lead to the recurrence. As, pre, as I showed that if the PSA value more than 50, none have the disease free after the cryo operation. More than 20, a lot of patients have the recurrence. But the PSA value less than 20, most of the patients uh, have the disease free status, even they have the high glycine score. I see. Um, uh, maybe a final question. Um, how how common do the patients, um, if they recur, um, do they usually do radical prostatectomy or uh, radiotherapy? And how what, do you have an approximate proportion of patients that uh, need um, radical treatment after cryotherapy? Uh, after cryotherapy, we always do the radiation or redo cryoabrasion because. Uh, the radical prostatectomy cannot resolve our, our tissue. The cryotherapy will lead to a very, very severe uh, adhesion between the prostate and the nearby tissue. So the radical yeah. prostatectomy seems not stop it. But the radiation or reduced cryotherapy can do that. I see. I see. Thank you very much, Professor Chen. Um, okay, thank it's, you, it's, Professor Chu. Yeah. Thank you.